it's time for another one of Bohica's War Thunder favorites, and we're going to catch up with the J7W1, which was added in the last patch of 1.43. We're going to go over some quick data and background information about the plane, and then I'll go into how I like to fly it, and hopefully this helps you. This is a replay of a 5 kill game. I found this to be able to shove a 30 minute round into 9 minutes. Save some time, you know. So this was the only canard configuration plane where the main wing and the engine are behind the fuselage and cockpit, or in the back of the fuselage and cockpit, and you have the elevator kind of in the front. Only one that Japan did. This is a much more advanced plane than the uh, Ascender that the US tried. As you can see, I'm coming up on a Tiger Cat, and this is where this plane really shines. It is pretty damn quick. Uh, I always like to climb at about 20, 25 degree angle at the start, and then as it slows down, and I go about 15, let the uh, engine cool off. But here you go. Look at this thing's closing speed. I'm doing about 300 miles an hour. This tire cat never had a chance. He should have put his nose down and tried to run away. Game over. 430s in the nose of this thing. Lights out. So that's one kill. Alright. So this plane flew in August of 1945. It had three test flights. There was only two built. The first prototype was scrapped. I don't believe it was ever found again. Or it was just disassembled to delete it off the earth. The second one that never flew is actually in the United States Air and Space Museum and it's sitting in storage waiting for restoration. Uh, this, The engine in the back of this thing is actually a radial and that's where you see these big kind of like air intakes was to try and keep this 2100 horsepower engine cooled. That was one of the problems I had. Hello Mr. B-17. Let's make a friendly little pass on him. Lights out. He's gonna burn. Let him go. This thing, like I said, those nose cannons do work. So that's two kills. Has a six-bladed prop. Hello, Spitfire. So much going on, right? You can see, though, it has a six-bladed prop in the back. Now, I took my bet on this guy because I figured he was probably a Spitfire Mark IX variant with only two 20mm Hispanos on the front. I have 430s. Gauge him a little bit further out. I broke his aileron. He eventually uh, either bails out or crashes and dies. That's three. And... The plan was to output about 150 planes a month so that it could attack B-29s as an interceptor. It was never meant for a churn fighter, and that's where I think some people get problems with this, is that I like to keep an altitude of at least 10,000 feet, you know, kind of medium altitude, and I like it so you can see I'm going to dive down this guy. But I like to have that room of kind of dive and then go back up and so on. You never, If you try to churn fight this thing, you're dead in the water. It's, it flies too funky. Um, weird thing is it doesn't really stall. There we go, look at that guy, just dead. And then back up. That's pick four now we're at? But anyway, back up. Just, that's, that's simply the name of the game. I like to watch for people that get engaged. You know, like that Mustang was fighting at zero. I zoom in, get the kill, go back up. It's kind of like a boom and zoomer gameplay is wet dream. Because this is all the thing does, except better. Because it has that big ass engine on the back. It is competitive with everything from F-80s, P-80s, killed meteors, I, as you saw in the video I put up a couple days ago, King Cobras, Tempest 2s, this plane is a one size fits all. Here goes this Mustang. Right here is a mistake though, if I was to tr try to turn around, loop around and get on that Mustang, he will out churn me and have my lunch. So I try to kind of dive away, extend, and reset. I have faith that this engine will outperform his uh, Packard built Merlin. But luckily for me, a couple zeros get back there. So I'm going to turn around and try to get on this guy. Here we go. So sorry for trying to slam all the information up front, but I wanted to try to get all the data about this plane up front so we could talk about gameplay now. So I'm going to try to keep an angle on him. I just want to get that nose on target. And that's where this kind of gets into problems with this plane. The slower you go and the lower you go, the more sluggish it gets and the more you're dead. And right here I'm kind of uncomfortable with how low I am. But as you can see, he's starting to outclimb me there. I think I turned off WEP at this point because I was trying to save the engine from overheating. But he churns and this is where it gets interesting. Where it gets interesting. So right there you see, just trying to do a simple scissors, this thing is kind of, that was kind of a cheap trick shot. But you're going to see scissoring with a Mustang equals dead in this thing. Roll. And he's on my six. 
just like that. Luckily for me, there was a zero there, so I decided that I'm just going to drag him and let the zero get a kill. So I kind of get him in a churn, burn off some of his energy, and then I'm going to just put the nose down, put the hammer down, and let those zeros eat. It's right there. He's still having to worry about that zero. Just kind of do a little couple of basic churns and jer jerks, and there he is. He's dead. So that that was 100%. The two zeros behind me saving my ass and me kind of setting them up for it. But happy days, right? So like I said, the keys to this thing, whenever I go into a game, and if you're struggling with this plane, all I can say is be the attacker, be the aggressor. And when you play aggressive, you're going to either get rewarded like I did in this game, or you're going to fall flat in your face. I either get three to five kill games like this, and I just fast forward it because there's a bomber hiding in the map and you guys don't need to see 20 minutes of me flying around looking for one fucking bomber. But just when you fly this thing this plane's name was magnificent lightning anyway just a little side note but you just want to be the magnificent wolf we'll call you that you want to be the hunter um most planes i say you want to sit up high and wait for your target attack always be on the attack always be on the attack keep up the line you don't have much ammo you're a pretty fragile plane and be the aggressor you know that, that's all i can keep stressing you have 430 mils in your nose not much ammo, as you see I just kind of did quick burst here and there, that's one thing you have to learn. There's a ton of recoil with this thing, so I always aim underneath the plane and then kind of let the recoil of the rounds carry into it. And you can see there's the bomber up there, and we're just going to do this fun game of climbing. But, aim underneath the plane and let the, you know, you kind of fire your burst and eventually the burst will go up into it. So does that make sense? Um, and the way the cannons are kind of set above the nose too, it's kind of weird, you get used to it though after a few rounds. So, this plane is so hard to learn off the bat, but once you get the hang of how it flies, how it shoots, get some upgrades, it's one of my favorites. And I hope all of you who, if you took it out once or twice and you're like, oh, I hate this plane, I hate this plane, play 10 rounds of it. Play 10 rounds of it, you're going to get some bad matchmaking, you're going to have some bad situations, and then you're going to have games like this. Um, if you just, like I said, keep your altitude medium to high and be the attacker. Um, don't churn fight. You churn fight, you're dead. I can't stress that enough. The thing is too sluggish to churn fight most things. And you can see that this B-17 pilot is going to try to light me up at a mile away because I just love when they do that. I mean, it just, just makes me want to give them a big hug. But we're closing on this guy. This is kind of what this plane was actually meant for in real life. Kind of high altitude intercepting here. But he's trying to, you can see in the bottom right on the replay map, he's trying to lower me off the map and he just teleported. One trick I can't teach you guys enough on my channel, when you're about to tell, wait, what says, you return to battle, zoom climb straight up because it's going to convert that altitude to slightly lower. Your speed is going to be reset always to a certain number. Like even even if you hit the side of the map at 600 mph, you're going to be coming lower and slower. At least when you convert that, convert that energy to altitude, you start at a higher altitude at that lower speed so you can dive down. And as you can see with this guy, I kind of caught up with him that way. So there we go. He caught me on fire. I'm pretty pissed. I let off the rest of my ammo into his wing. Z cut the throttle. Cut the engine. That's a pretty aggressive fire. I thought it was actually dead. But it's kind of put the nose down and fires out. Restart engine. Have a nice trip, Mr. B-17. See you next fall. So I hope this, you know, I just, it is a prototype plane. I think it was necessary for the Japanese tree to get because they don't have much for late war. And this was a planned plane if they didn't surrender that would actually have been in production. So, you know, that's all I'm going to say on that subject. Here is what I get for five kills. Wait, this was this was a times two. Almost 110,000 uh, lions. Vehicle research was a little on the lacking side, but this is a premium count, of course, times two. I did get the airframe unlock, but that's about it. So, this thing, like I said, mentioned in the other video, is almost like grinding for a jet. So, anyway, I think this is a good addition, though, for Japan since the 1.43 patch. I hope, uh, if you haven't tried it, don't give up on it right away. Give this, uh, give the Magnificent Lightning a couple tries, and you're going to have bad match. Like I said, you're going to fall flat in your face, and then you're going to have games like this. So, you just got to pick yourself up and keep going. I have a little bit of extra footage I wanted to share with you guys from a round that Shadow and I had. 
In this clip here, I'm against two F-84s. One tried to pull away from the head-on, nice. which is a good move, but this thing him. can pitch up pretty sharply. So I was able to catch his aileron there. Kind of a lucky shot, but I've been getting these more often than not with this thing. So the one F-84 is going to run up the aileron damage, and then the other F-84 is somewhere back behind me. And just to kind of show you, I mean, the F-84 isn't the greatest jet ever, but this just shows the uh, kind of the magic of the J-7W1. And yes, this was quite a bit of luck, but I've been more lucky than not in this plane. So here comes the other F-84. He doesn't want to take the head on. These are two guys in the squadron, as you can see. He tries to do, he tries to do a smart thing and, you know, zoom climb above me, since I don't have a ton of energy here, but... I try to oblige, you know, two versus one. This wasn't the smartest move, but you'll see how I mean this thing stalls right around there. And then I kind of do this crazy little flat spin. Tumble, tumble, tumble. And this thing recovers. It's just, it's kind of a goofy little flight model. So I have perfect control of my plane again. And I'm going to continue to dive. And he's going to follow me. And you can say I got lucky there. A little lucky there, but I'm just going to keep doing my little aileron flips and spins. And good night, F-84. Nice. That's that's what this plane does well. Um, and then you're going to see F-84 number two with the broken the aileron. Nice. There. Nice. Two for one special on F-84s. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the little extra content.